how does it feel to be back in an in-person literary event after almost two years? Once I come here and I see everyone, and you know, book fair is something that is very close to our hearts. We've been coming here since forever. I mean, ever since I was born, I think I was here. So when I see all these people, when I get the vibe, you know, the music and all the book lovers moving around, you get this feeling inside that I belong. And that's great because the world for the last two years had been in isolation. Uh, tell us a bit about your earliest book fair memories or some of your most memorable moments in the book fair when you were growing up or when you were in your formative years. Oh, I remember the time when book fair used to be in the Maidan. I think, frankly, that was a bo uh, you know benchmark which you just can't match with any other location. Uh, uh, it was incredible. Once I remember, we were in the middle of uh, a book fair and there's this Chatterjee International and it went on fire right in front of our eyes. I don't know if you remember that time. It was incredible and the whole crowd coming together and everybody talking about not the spectacle, how can we help? You know, so that's Calcutta. So uh, my, my earliest memories are uh, the book fair in the Maidan and they're the fondest memories, frankly. Now, a specific question for you is that uh, you've also been obviously very involved in corporate affairs and juggling poetry along with it. How do you distinguish those two elements in your brain? Like, do you have to consciously get into a zone of writing poetry and then shifting to your, to your professional corporate works? How, how does that work? You know, I sometimes think it's because of my corporate life that I write poetry. The sorrow I get there, <laughs> <laughs> so poetry comes out very naturally. I hope my boss is not listening to this, but jokes aside, I think it, it, it's a combination of left and right brain, and I have my times when I write poetry. I'm very disciplined in my writing poetry, which I've learned from my corporate life. So I write every morning, there's a time, and uh, that's the way I do it. So I think both feed into each other, really. It's not so different from each other. Both, and who says corporate life is not creative? I mean, there's so much of creativity, like I'm a finance professional, even for me, finance is so creative. So I think both feed into each other. Um, about performance poetry, you are a, one of the most uh, distinguished performance poets across the country. How do you see that industry developing in the last few years with more and more youngsters coming in? How do you see the evolution of performance poetry in the time to come? Oh, I love it. I find it amazing how people have uh, started expressing themselves through poetry and their body. They see their body as an art, the way they dress up, and frankly speaking, poetry is a way of speaking as well, right? Of expressing yourself. So I find it fabulous, especially slam poetry, when it, when, and so many kids are, uh, you know, they are adopting to it. So through performance poetry, I see a revival of poetry. Uh, because at one point in time, you know, People had said that, oh, Kobita Baba Re, I am so not into it. Ami Bujina. But from the stage of that Bujina to the Bojha. And also, if you notice, bias, because of slam poetry and because of performance poetry, people have started using a language that is colloquial, that can be understood. And people don't think that, uh, for example, they don't hold uh, Shakespeare as the gold standard. So that has moved and that's brilliant because literature reflects the times. Talking about literature reflecting the times last two years in the midst of the pandemic, we have all realized the true value of art. Sequestered in our homes when we have had to resort to poetry, films, music. Has the pandemic changed your perspective on what poetry can do in terms of a therapeutic value or in terms of just catalyzing the creativity when everything shuts down? Has the pandemic made a difference to your poetic vision? Definitely, I'll tell you how also. I started a podcast called Uncut Poetry which was just before the pandemic started and it's really taken off and I really credit the pandemic for it because I could concentrate on it, visualize it, think about it, strategize it. It's taken off beautifully. So that's a great avenue for poetry. I would never have explored it to the extent I did if it wasn't for the pandemic. We and teamed up with Oxford Bookstore and uh, we launched a competition of poetry called The New Normal. So where people were trying to express how they were feeling because uh, the pan they were getting various kinds of feelings and they didn't know how to express it. Some people were shouting, some people had actually gone inside and um, we made it into a competition because you know competitions, they, they felt that they got a sense of purpose that I'm going to write for it. And uh, then 
after the competition, there were so many good pieces. Uh, we came up with a book last year called uh, The New Normal. I've edited the book. And the fantastic thing about it is that in that book, everyone has encapsulated what the new normal did for them. And some of them are first time writers, some of them are senior corporate professionals who've never written before, some of them are just kids. And, uh, you know, when they saw their poems published, they, uh, you know, they've DM'd me and they've like, put up posts saying that in the pandemic, I learned how to write a poem and feel happy by writing.